again we welcome everybody to today's service, Sunday service, the sixth Sunday in Trinity and the second Sunday in the month of July. My prayer is that as God has given us grace to see the second half of the year, His grace will see us through in Jesus' name. This is from the Diocese of Ife Anglican Communion. God bless you as you listen. The title of our meditation this morning is The Futility of Worldliness. The Futility of Worldliness. And we're going to take our text from 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 to 17. 1 John 2, 1 to 17. My dear children, I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commands. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, the person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Verse 7. Dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it's an old one you have had from the very beginning. This old commandment to love one another is the same message you have heard before. Yes, yet it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment. And you are also living it. For the darkness is disappearing and the true light is already shining. If anyone claims, I'm living in the light but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. I'm writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I'm writing to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I'm writing to you who are young in the faith because you have won your battle with the evil one. I'm writing to you who are God's children because you know the Father. I'm writing to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I have written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God lives in your hearts and you have won your battle with the evil one. Verse 15. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. A craving for everything we see and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but we, but are from the world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who pleases God will live forever. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. We are read from 1 John chapter 2. And this is a letter written by an aged apostle, John, to his spiritual children. And he was compelled as a father to tell them the mind of God, which is, I write this to you so that you will not sin. This is the high expectation of God for his children. It is better not to sin, even though God has provided an advocate, and that is Jesus Christ, who can plead our case before the Father if we fall into sin. But this passage towards the later it makes a specific reference to the world. And what is the world? The tendency to sin is not only due to the fallen nature bequeathed by the sin of our father Adam, but we are also living in a world that we are prone to the attraction of the world system. The Bible says we are in the world, but we don't belong to the world if we are truly in Christ. The Bible says the world will love you as one of its own if you belong to it. 
but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world, so it hates you. That's John 15, 19. The world here refers to the principles and the ideas prevalent in the world, and these are contrary to the laws of God. The love of the world is the inordinate desire for earthly things. And this ultimately draws people away from God and draws them into destruction. The world system is opposed to everything that is God and the world system is under the dominion of Satan. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, it says, We know that we are the children of God and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. So the world is made up of unsaved and unregenerated people, those who move and operate within a system, those who follow and obey its traditions, its culture, its music, its philosophies. And laws put into effect in the world violate God's standards. And these are all of this world. The inspiration and the initiation for all the activities in this world come from only one source and that is the devil. In the world system, evil things are referred to as good, and good things are even called evil. And all these are under the umbrella of this evil world system. Without doubt, the world system is heading for destruction. Our passage outlines the core elements of the world system. Refer back to 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 which says, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. The KJV version of the Bible calls them the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So the first one, craving for physical pleasure, sex, sensuality, using women and nakedness to sell everything, even from bread to music, inordinate desire for food, alcohol, drugs. We have an epidemic of, of drug consumption in Nigeria today and in many parts of the world. Partying and anything that gives athletic pleasure, all these are things that we see in the world. Secondly, it talks about craving for everything we see. Houses, cars, clothes, all the good things of life. Mind you, God is not opposed to you having the good things of life, but he doesn't want the things of life to control and dominate and to have you. And the third component of the world, according to our passage in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, is pride in our achievements and possessions. People crave for recognition. They crave for certificates. Sometimes I wonder, what is a man doing with 10 chieftaincy titles? Or even after he's so wealthy and well-known, he's still seeking after office. People are so fixated on earthly and human recognitions and achievements. Some people will not even respond if you don't address them with the proper title, chief, doctor, and so on and so forth. But there is danger in the world system. And what is dangerous about the world system is its futility. Ultimately, worldly possessions do not provide lasting satisfaction. Whatever pleasure you derive will fade away. And this is explicitly mentioned in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 10 to 11. Ecclesiastes 5, 10 to 11, which reads, Those who love money will never have enough. How meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. Verse 11. The more you have, the more people come to help you to spend it. So what good is wealth, except perhaps to watch it slip through your fingers? So that is just the futility and the temporariness of what the pleasure. The danger about the things of the world is the end result. Who will leave this world and go with his possessions? There is no such person. And when people have inordinate desire for pleasure, for position and the things of this world, they can lose their lives and lose their eternity with God in the process. And the Bible emphasizes this in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. 1 John 2, 17 says, The world is fading away 
along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does pleases God will live forever. So then to conclude, what is the right attitude towards the world, the world system as we know it? You cannot love the world and love God at the same time. It is not possible. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Do not love this world or the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. To love the world system is equivalent to turning your back on God. And that is, to me, not being smart at all. Because the world system is fading away and it will not last. If you continue loving the world, you do not have a future. But if you turn to God and receive his gift, then you will live and be assured of eternal life. It is through the grace of God and the life of Christ that you can live above the world system. It's a better life. It's a peaceful life. And it will give you permanent satisfaction. John 3.16 says, For this is how God loves the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you are still living and you are dominated by the world system, you need Christ in your life. And if you are a Christian already, you need to depart from living like the world. You need to live like a true child of God. And my prayer is that the world will not dominate us, but like the Bible has said, we will shine as lights in the world to give light to those who are still walking in darkness. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word that you have sent to us this morning. We pray, Lord, that you help us not to be controlled by the desires of our flesh and our eyes and the pride of life. But we pray that you give us grace to truly repent of all our sins if we are not yet born again. And those of us who are already professing Christians, give us grace not to live according to the world, but rather show light to the world so that they may come to Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.